Hi, this is Nick with Enemy Plays, and today we're talking about Slime Jumper from developer Geo Mertex. Slime Jumper features a story mode, local co op, level editor, multiple characters, and even in game sounds. The only reason I bring that one up in kind of a sarcastic tone like that is uh, if you go to a minute 10 of the intro video on the Steam page, it's listed as a feature of the game. <laughs> like, that's that's kind of expected. Uh, 2016, we expect in-game sounds. Anyhow, the developer claims this is a cross between Super Mario and Super Meat Boy. While all platformers do owe a bit to Mario, calling these two similar is a bit of a stretch. It's a lot closer to Kaizo, which is like the Super Meat Boy of Super Mario World. So let's call this what it is. A poor man's Super Meat Boy. Now, I'm going to do my best to judge this game independently of Super Meat Boy, but some comparisons might have to be made. I'm going to start by talking about the controls. The first thing that I notice about the game in its controls is holy fuck do you jump high. Like, ridiculously high, there's way too much going on there, and it ends up creating problems later in the game. When you start having jump height be a serious factor to you know, spikes that are above you and stuff like that, it'll kill you instantly, it gets a little irritating that there's really not a good way to control your jump height and everything. It, it's just, eh, I kind of fucking hate it. Also, your control is a bit difficult. It's hard to really move around when you don't I, I mean, I only worked with a keyboard. I didn't plug in a controller to get that to see if it did anything different. If there was uh, pressure sensitivity in uh, buttons for jump or in movement. But the tutorial has keyboard instructions and everything. The game was clearly made with a keyboard being used in mind, not just a controller. So that's what I went with. And it doesn't doesn't work all that well. It doesn't feel right. So, it's a little iffy, especially when control is actually one of the selling points that's on the, the Steam page. Now, gameplay in general, we've got some cool things and not so cool things. One of the things the game does well is it gives you checkpoints. It's something that I really wanted to experiment with because I I love unforgiving games with a little bit of forgiveness like I like being able to have that checkpoint to say okay I cleared all this bullshit <laughs> I don't have to repeat the exact same actions another 400 times but at the same time eh, that's what makes the games challenging I get that so you get three checkpoints you get five in a boss level, I guess. At least in the first boss level. That's as far as I made it. And you can use them wherever you want. Anytime you die, you just go back to that spot. You lose any of the stars, which are like a bonus currency you get for going out of your way kind of a thing. You know, think the bandages in Super Meat Boy or red coins in Super Mario. Stuff like that. You lose all those stars when you die which makes your placement really important because you might place your checkpoint after where it's possible to get a star. No big deal. We're talking 100% completion if you want to get all the stars. It adds a level of difficulty that you should be doing without checkpoints anyway. But when you make a game that has checkpoints, you probably made a game that almost requires checkpoints. And that's kind of what this game does. You can even feel the way some of the levels are built that it kind of says like hey put a checkpoint here you're gonna need it now one of the things that makes a game like super meat boy really really popular and really really good in my opinion it's not the difficulty it's not the incredible rage inducing thousand times dying gameplay that the game offers it's consistency the controls are consistent, the levels are consistent, the obstacles are consistent. Everything is exactly the same every single time. This game doesn't do that. This is the comparison I have to make to Super Meat Boy. 
in that when you die in Super Meat Boy, everything resets. Every time you play that level, it's going to be exactly the same from the beginning. This game doesn't have that. When you die, the level doesn't reset and start at the predetermined location of all of the moving objects in the game. They continue going from where they left off, which means they don't sync up properly. And I'll show a few examples here, but that leads to you running forward several times. Like in some of these examples, I'm just holding down the right direction. And... I should have the exact same results every time, but sometimes I make it, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I make it past one or two, but not the third. Sometimes I only make it past the first one, and sometimes I make it past all three. It just happens. It's completely random as far as what's going to happen there, because there's no pattern. I mean, there's a pattern I can determine, but it's not worth determining. It, it's just easier to hold forward until I'm done and I'm past that obstacle, especially when I have checkpoints that I can put in. So once I get to a safe point and I'm done dealing with all that crap, I can just checkpoint and I don't have to worry about it ever again. I very quickly got to that point in this game where I didn't give a fuck about any of the stars that were there anymore. Just get me through the level. Now, another thing is you have camera control with the mouse and it gets a little weird when you actually use it because you go out of focus like the further you get away from the camera and everything the more out of focus things are or the further the camera is away from you in different ways what it kind of leads up to is you have situations where obstacles that you can see you should be able to see them are a bit blurry and you don't know if they're actually harmful or not and that's not a good recipe for a game. I should know what's going to kill me, and if I don't, I should be able to like be clear on it. There are certain things that, like, yeah, I can see an enemy not being clear if it'll kill you or not, but run into it, that kills me. When the thing's, like, fuzzy and I can't tell one from another, that's an issue. Uh, anything that's a danger in a game like this should be clearly labeled as a danger from something else once you see it once so there's kind of an issue now this is a minor one and it's something that it just bugs me when games do this because it feels lazy I guess I, I don't know um, when you finish a level in this game you're just done you don't you make it to the exit and you automatically progress to the next level which is really annoying because there are occasionally stars that are right next to the exit, which means you have to go through all the bullshit in the level, dodging all of the crap that's been there and everything like that, not dying because checkpoints and everything like that are great, but if you're going for the star, you need to not die as well. And then you get to the end, if you just miscalculate your jump by a little bit, you succeeded in the level, but you have to do the entire thing over again because you missed that last star. Sometimes, you don't even see that star until it's too late. And then you have to kind of go back and do all the bullshit again. When it would have been easy enough to just, you know, let me hit the up key or the down key or something like that when I get to the door and we'll be done. You don't have to automatically take me there. So, my final... My final thoughts about the game is that, you know, for five bucks, it's not bad. It really isn't. I have a lot of complaints, but that's because it's being compared to a better game. Um, it, it really is derivative of Super Meat Boy, and if you're going to spend money on an experience like that, Super Meat Boy is the way to go. If you don't want to spend $15 or so on Super Meat Boy, this game isn't bad. It'll, uh, it earns its $5, and the thing that's probably the worst criticism I can give to this game is that uh, it's just shy of being a really good game. With just a little bit more effort, this could have been a solid Super Meat Boy clone or something along those lines, but it falls just a little short of that. So what I would say is I'm looking forward to the next Slime Jumper game, and I will pick it up. 
I would recommend picking up this game as well if this is the kind of thing you're into and you can forgive some of the things that I mentioned in this review. So I'm going to close it out with that. I'm going to thank you for uh, sticking around for my review and listening to me rattle on about it. My name is Nick. I'm with Enemy Plays. And, uh, you know, it means a lot if you guys like and comment on uh, this video here. It uh, really helps. So uh, thanks again.